So the Battlefield 1 trailer was released, and it is glorious. It is one of the most amazing things I've ever seen. The entire time I was watching this, I just, I, I had my sphincter clenched, and I was giggling, and I was staring at the screen, wondering what cool shit would happen next. All these little snippets that we get of the tanks, and the fucking horses, and the sabers, and the shovels, it just had me... I was riveted throughout. I was excited in a way that a video game has not excited me in a long, long time. Because my list of video games that I am super, super excited for is a very short list. I'm interested in many games, yes, but there are very few games that make me really, really excited. There are some games I want them to come out tomorrow. I want to I wanna feel them, I want to play them, I want to be part of them. There are just so few games that are going to captivate me like this one is. I'm a huge Battlefield fan. I've got easily over a thousand hours in Battlefield 3. I maxed out the rank on two different platforms. Um, it was the last game I regularly played on the Xbox before I switched over to the Master Race. Battlefield 4, I have, what, 1,412 hours in Battlefield 4. Game's machete. And I have no problem flopping around my big-ass dick in videos showing me shooting down things with tanks and generally displaying my prowess. I have no problem whatsoever. Humility is not my strongest attribute. Hell no, not in Battlefield. But this video isn't going to be specifically about Battlefield. It's going to be about Battlefield and Call of Duty, specifically Infinite Warfare and Battlefield 1, which is... Not the best name. Mm. Both of these reveal trailers are out on YouTube. The Battlefield 1 official reveal trailer and the Call of Duty Infinite Warfare reveal trailer. Can you spot the difference? Is there some sort of numerical statistic between these two videos that catches your eye immediately? Is there something about these two bits of analytics that instantly pops right to the forefront of your attention. Let me highlight it. Bam! Look at the like to dislike ratios on these. Holy shit. And I mean, holy shit. I will admit, I was legitimately surprised at how well-received Battlefield 1 was. Now, I'm glad I was surprised. I thought there would be a lot more displeasure from the community at the idea that was presented. And that's ultimately what these trailers are. These trailers are a battle of ideas. These trailers have no gameplay footage. Really. These trailers have no non-scripted gameplay. These trailers are just mostly, they're cinematic, they're meant to set the scene, they're meant to get you hyped and stoked and ready to be penetrated. That's what they're there for. We don't know anything about how either of these games will play out. All we know is that one, well, first off, they both look really good. From a technical standpoint, they both look really good, especially Battlefield. But... This is a war of settings. This is a war of concepts. This is a war of ideas. And yes, it is a war. These are competitive games that are competing against one another. A lot of people out there are going to make the choice. Come holiday season, they've got X dollars and they have to make a choice. Oh no, a console gamer might have to make a choice. I sure hope they can handle it. Fuck off. Console gamers aren't stupid. The last few days I've had multiple people telling me from the video I did with Maximal, oh, this console gamers just love simplicity too much. They just couldn't handle the fact they might actually have to make some sort of decision. Some of them might actually have to make a Google search. Yeah, I, they're not stupid. They're human beings. Fuck. Everyone talks about how I shit on console gamers, but I'm the one who's not giving into the... Well, as President George W. said, the soft bigotry of low expectations. It's not the exact same thing, but it's close in a way. 
I'm not the one treating console gamers like they're too stupid to make an informed decision. And I'm not the... No, I'm not going to make this video about that. Call of Duty and Battlefield. That's what we're here to see. This is a war of ideas. It's a war of concepts. It's a war of the future versus the past. Battlefield is giving people what I really think they want. I think for the most part, people are sick of these futuristic games. Not that there's anything wrong with games set in the future. There's just so many of them. And Call of Duty for the last... Well, there's Advanced Wars Black Ops 2. That's in the future. There's, there's Advanced Warfare. That's in the future. There's Black Ops 3. That's in the future. And there's Infinite Warfare. That's in the future future. Hell, I remember the days where I would argue with my friends, which is better, the Car 98K or the Springfield? Which is better, the Thompson or the MP40? Which is better, the SVT40 or the Gewehr? Even though we didn't know it was pronounced Gewehr at the time, we were kids, we just called it the Jewer. Because we didn't give a shit, because we were kids. Thanks, Forgotten Weapons. Call of Duty continues to sell and sell and sell and sell, and much of that is the fact that it is resting upon its own laurels. It's just like FIFA, it's just like Madden. You only have to reinvent so much, you only have to innovate so much, you already have such a huge following, people will buy the game because it's Call of Duty, because it's FIFA, because it's Madden. It's the next one. You're going to buy it. It's been a year, time for the new, out with the old. But these like to dislike ratios are just insane. 587,000 dislikes? That's like Rebecca Black Friday levels of hatred. And these are made up. Now, I will say this in Call of Duty's defense, I will say this. That number, it's very possible that the number of dislikes could also be immensely influenced by the fact that Call of Duty 4 Remaster, which many people care about, and they don't care about Infinite Warfare, is tied to paying for Infinite Warfare bonuses, and how Call of Duty 4 Remastered isn't available as a standalone. That is a reason enough to dislike the video, and I would encourage you to do that. It is an anti-consumer business practice, and it should be not taken lightly. It's clear that people are ready for something different. It's clear that people are ready for something that is not as common. People are ready for a World War I game. They're ready for another World War II game. They're ready to get out of the futuristic slump in which so many shooters are put in right now, especially Call of Duty. Call of Duty is perhaps the worst offender. A futuristic game comes out. I mean, when Black Ops 2 came out, people back then were saying, you know, I'd really like to see World War II again. And then Black Ops, I mean, sorry, the Advanced Warfare comes out. Oh, Ghost! I fucking forgot about Ghost this whole time I forgot about Ghost. That piece of shit game. I couldn't even do like five games on the free weekend. I was like, God, this is horrible. During Ghost, people were like, World's World War II, we want to go back to World War II. Modern Warfare 3, World's World War II, I know we're going back in time a little bit. It's Call of Duty, it's all a blur. It's all a blur of mediocrity. Advanced Warfare comes out, which is I thought was pretty decent. But even then, people were going, uh, where's World War II? Black Ops 3 comes out, where's World War II? Game after game after game after game comes out, people are crying, practically begging, give us Call of Duty World at War 2 style. Give us another showdown at El Alamein. Let us scale the cliffs at D-Day. Let's go back to fill in blank, blank French village. Let's go back to frickin' what was the place called? Iwo Jima! Let's go back to Iwo Jima or Guadalcanal or something. Granted, these games do have long development time, so the reactionary period will not be right off the bat, you know, a knee-jerk. But still, the writing was on the wall a long time ago that people were going to be more and more displeased the more and more games came out that were set in the future. Granted, I understand why Call of Duty didn't change, and it still hasn't yet, because the money kept rolling in. No CEO worth their salt would ever say, no, no, we need to stop doing this one thing that's just printing money. This, right here, 
This is Battlefield's time to really, really shine. This is DICE's golden opportunity to hammer some nails into the coffin of the supremacy that is Call of Duty sales numbers. This is Battlefield's chance to show everybody that we will give you the setting you want. We will give you what you want. All you have to do is be willing to not buy Call of Duty for a year. What are you really missing out on? Don't buy it for a year and instead try something you've probably never tried before. 64 player battles, the setting of World War I, horses, sabers, tanks, biplanes, let's do it! This is something new. You've been in space a thousand times. You've played Advanced Warfare, you've played Black Ops 3. How much more different will Infinite Warfare be? Maybe it will be completely different. It does look like they're really going balls to wall with this futuristic stuff. Space battles? Hell, sign me up! It looks cool. I won't write it off yet. I mean, there's a reason I haven't thumbed down the Call of Duty trailer. Because I'm, I'm not, I'm still on the fence. I think it could be cool. But if anybody can fuck up a cool idea, it's Call of Duty. And Bioshock Infinite. And Bethesda. But it's so obvious people want this. And people don't want this, you know, they're not lukewarm about the idea. They love this. Look at that. 416,660 likes to 8,629 dislikes. That bar is so beautifully blue. It is lovely. It is so lovely. And as a Battlefield fan who has played the Battlefield since Battlefield Bad Company 2. Fuck Hardline though. To, to hell with that. I am super glad to see how many people are receptive to this idea. And I'm also glad to see this trend that is emerging that people are eagerly voicing their displeasure at companies who just won't, don't take the hint. I mean, I didn't think DICE would have the balls to do World War I, really. Even in my video. A World War I Battlefield game? This could absolutely work. I didn't think they'd do it, but I was totally on board with the idea. And now that I've seen the trailer, I'm ready for it. Let's do it. Both of these games I'm interested in, but Battlefield 1? My interest goes further. I'm excited. I am hyped. I'm realistic about my hype. I mean, I'm super excited about the idea, and that's the thing. These trailers, as I said before, it's a battle of ideas. I'm excited about the idea. I ain't pre-ordering shit yet. And neither should you. And neither should you. You can be excited and ready to play a game and ready to see how it is without dropping your money down on something before you've really seen the product. This is a showcase for both companies, for both products. It's a showcase. It's an advertisement. It's meant to get you excited. Remember to temper your excitement with the reality that is the 2016 video game market landscape. I will, if possible, be participating in whatever alphas and betas I can get my hands on for both of these games. And let it be known, I want both of them to do well and be well and succeed. I want both of these games to be great. I want both of these games to be 10 out of 10, and they're both worth the money, and I want to play them both, and I want to love them both for their own appeals. Will I be playing Battlefield 1 more than Call of Duty? Oh, absolutely. If I get them both, I'll probably absolutely be playing Battlefield 1 way, way more. The, the, most played battle, or sorry, the most played Call of Duty game I ever had was probably Advanced Warfare. I had about 100 hours in that. I can't quantify my COD 4 hours back in the day, but I would still say I played more Advanced Warfare. It was just fun. Okay, I don't care if it's in the future, in the past, if it's in the modern day. If it's a good game, it's a good game. But the idea of the setting is so wonderfully reflected by people's eagerness to see something newish. Something that is less explored, like World War I. This was sort of a reactionary video. This was sort of a uh, spur-of-the-moment kind of video I made here. Which is why I ramble a bit. But I wanted to get my thoughts out as to why I think the disparaging difference between these two is so monumental, so titanic. Is that a, titanic? Is that an adjective?
Yeah, I don't care. Bring on the battlefield.